Hello, Paul Smith here with Serif Penworks, and I just wanted to show you a quick video on how I shoot and edit my photos. Now that I have this fancy new photo booth, it's not fancy. Uh, in fact, this photo booth cost a whopping uh, $11 on Amazon, but my wife bought it for me, and it was very nice of her. I had one modification to it. This is the bag that it came in, and I cut that bag, and I taped it up there, and then I also taped it up underneath there and I'm using it as a light diffuser. If this isn't on here, there's a whole bunch of little LEDs in here that reflect off of the pen and they look absolutely terrible. So I went ahead and put that on there. And it turns out this is just real thin broadcloth. It's kind of the perfect uh, thing. So uh, this is what we're gonna be using. I am using a Galaxy S9. That is the phone that I do this on. If you have an iPhone, this may be applicable, it may not. I don't know because I haven't had an iPhone in a very long time. But if you have a Samsung Galaxy S8 or 9, this should work just fine for you. So I should point out I'm using the default Samsung camera app. Um, I'm not going to use any of the things over here on the right-hand side of the screen. I don't need any of those icons. I just need to make sure that the flash is turned off. You don't want flash. Um, I will explain the next row real quick because I am using Pro Mode. I could use Auto. I can tell a lot of people are doing that. Auto kind of, you know, I can manually kind of come in here and it looks like don't do that. So we're going to use Pro instead. The benefit of using Pro is these settings will stay in here and they will save so that every time you want to take a picture uh, with your phone, it's always going to look exactly the same. So all your photos will be consistent across your collection. So I'll explain what these do. Um, up here, that's exposure. There's nothing I can do about it. It does it automatically. White balance, all this does is tell the phone or the camera exactly what color white is. So depending on the different kind of lights, you know, you can have something like 2300K that's more like direct sunlight. Uh, and then the more blue you get, you can see it changes the color on the screen here. I happen to know that the LEDs that I've got in this unit are 6500K. So if you buy the same $11 unit, and I'll try and put a link in the description, then it's... 6500K. Also happens to be exactly the same as cloudy, so you can just select cloudy. Um, autofocus is fine. I'm not going to use manual focus. There's no need for it because I'm not using a tripod. Um, standard is fine. I'm not going to do any of this crap here. I can go vivid, different tones, breezy. Don't do that. Leave it on standard. We'll fix it later. The two that matter are down here. Those are going to be my aperture and my shutter speed settings and my film speed or my ISO uh, sensitivity setting. So I'm going to go over ISO first. That's the one on the bottom here. This determines the sensitivity of the camera sensor itself. And you'll see I can go all the way down to 50, and I'm betting it's really it goes to 800. That's surprising. Usually it goes to a little bit higher than that. Um, back in the day, this would have been called film speed. You would buy different film speeds. You could buy ISO 300 or 400 or 1600 or 6400 if you were shooting sports and you needed a really fast shutter speed. Uh, but it just determines how much light is required to actually expose a photograph. Uh, and the amount of light is determined by two things down here on the bottom. Uh, the Galaxy S9 is actually one of the first camera phones that has an adjustable aperture. So we can choose between f-stop 1.5 and 2.4. Uh, the difference there is 1.5 is a little larger aperture or a larger hole for light to come into the camera. I want to use 2.4. I do not want to use uh, 1.5. I want my aperture to be smaller because the smaller the hole, the larger your depth of field. Depth of field means that things are going to be in focus here and they're also going to be in focus back here. Um, so more depth of field is good when you're taking product photos. Uh, the other thing I can control is my shutter speed. So what I could do is I could crank this all the way down to ISO 50 and I could put my shutter speed at about 1 15th and this would give me the best looking photo I have the kind of least sensitive, it takes the most light to expose this, so I'm going to have the least amount of kind of film grain on there, uh, noise. I'm going to have the most brilliant colors possible. Unfortunately, that's not really tenable because unless I've got a tripod, I just can't hold this thing quite that steady. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peg myself around 1 50th. That's going to take real sharp photos, even if I'm uh, real shaky, which I am because I haven't slept in a long time. Uh, so that's going to be around ISO 160 with this setup that I've got here. So now that I've done that, I want to make sure that my pen is facing the right way. I happen to like the ironwood on this side of it. You'll notice that when I put my pen there, it stays that way. What? How did I get it to do that? Why isn't it? I dropped my phone. Uh, why isn't it rolling over? And I'll take this out and I'll show you why. Because uh, there's a piece of paper under there. And it's this is leaning up against that piece of paper. 
I, you don't need to use a pen stand. Um, if you want a different angle, you want to stand your pen up, that's fine, I guess. But if you just want it to sit in the right orientation, um, just use a piece of paper. There's no reason you can't do that. You can see right here, I mean, or rather you can't see that the mat that it's sitting on is not level. You can put any kind of lumps and bumps in here, arrange it exactly the way you want. So we'll get a little bit more close up here. We'll try and get that as centered and as well kind of on the horizon as we can. And we'll take a photograph. And I'll go ahead and open that photo by tapping up there. So we've got some problems. Um, if I zoom in, you'll see there's some yellow around the pen here because it's not perfectly white. Obviously, if you look up here and over here, um, we've got this huge background and we need to take care of all those problems. So to do that, I'm going to use two pieces of software that come on the Galaxy S9. The first one is just when I tap the screen, it's just the main photo editing tools here. And the second one, if I hit these dots here, are Photo Editor Pro. I apologize. I'm going to have to do, when I do one thing here, I'm going to have to turn this back into portrait mode. Um, I apologize. It's going to suck for everybody watching. I don't know of any way to fix it other than to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this down. So I'm actually going to bring this down to 16 by 9, which is kind of a standard sort of laptop screen type of thing these days. I'm going to have to crop that down because I did not get it centered because I suck. And you'll notice it's also not perfectly straight. So I'll use the kind of rotation controls here and see if I can't make that a little straighter. That looks, that looks straight, I think. I think that looks straight. Sure, we'll say that's straight. And we'll go ahead and get that centered, which I shouldn't put my thumb on top of when I'm trying to center. And there we go. And actually, I kind of did a crap job. The cap isn't screwed on all the way, so those lines don't line up on there. That annoys me. <laughs> it's not exactly facing me. So this isn't going to be the perfect product shot, but this will still give you an idea of how I do it. So I'll go ahead and save this. And that's going to be edit number one. The next thing I'm going to do is come down here, and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to use my pen tool. And this is where I'm going to have to go into portrait mode, and I super duper apologize, but something with my recording software just oh, it will now. Well, of course it will. Well, never mind. I don't have to go into portrait mode. I'm literally going to use this pen tool. So I've got, I've got the marker here. I've got it white. I've got it as large as I possibly can, and I'm literally just going to draw on top of the corners here. Just draw on top of them. And you might say, wow, that looks great, except it looks terrible. Don't worry, we're going to make it look better. But hey, it looks better than it does. So now we're going to go ahead and open Photo Editor Pro. And I'm going to change three settings. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that yellow haze that we see. I'm going to go to Advanced, and I'm going to go to Color. And then I've got a little medicine dropper here, and if I touch on the screen, it brings up a little zoomy in. And I'm just going to find a bit of that color that looks like it's kind of there and you'll see right here that it's now selected that color what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the saturation and I'm gonna pull it down to zero so I could bring it up and you would see more of that color but I want it gone so bringing the saturation down to zero what that's going to do is it's going to completely remove that color and turn it into gray and I notice I've still got a little bit up here there's kind of a little bit of an orange color and I'm gonna do the same thing there I'm gonna pull that down and I'm gonna get rid of it but oh no I don't want to do that because you'll notice I lose a little bit of the detail on my ironwood. So this is the perfect example, kind of right here, if you watch. Um, some of that detail goes away, so I can't do that. So we'll have to use our second technique, but we've gotten rid of most of it. So if you do have a color in your pen that you just can't get rid of, uh, this is the other thing you can do. So we're going to go into tone. Uh, we're not going to adjust brightness or exposure. Uh, we are going to adjust the contrast. So I have found putting this uh, at 4 is right about where as far as I need to go. I can go up to about 10, but if you kind of watch the ends here and my hardware, whoa, <laughs> you'll notice that a lot of that detail starts going away when I get fairly high. So if you watch in the top right and left, as I ramp this up to three, four, and then finally five, I think it's gonna be where I'm going to leave it. I still have a lot of detail on the ends of my pen. Uh, I wanna make sure I keep that detail on the hardware. I gotta make sure you can still see my face right there, which is always annoying. And I might even want to pull that back down to four so I can keep the highest amount of detail possible, but you can no longer really see where I painted the corners. I think I do have to do five to get rid of that completely. Um, I could blend that in Photoshop, but this is my phone and it's easy because it's in my pocket. 
I'm going to jump to saturation and I'm going to bring some of this back. And the reason I have to do that is because I'm shooting in a really, really bright light environment and it washes out a lot of the color. So we'll go ahead and say 10. Sure, that sounds good. That's a little high. And we'll do 5 and we'll do 8. I find a lot of times when I'm looking especially at blanks for sale that makers will do exactly what I just did. They'll jack the saturation way up in an effort to make the thing look better than it actually does to try and make that amboina look like it's bright red and to make, you know, make that ironwood look like it's bright gold and all those colors. Um, to anybody that sells blanks, uh, don't do that. You suck. Stop doing that. My goal here is to make the pen look exactly as it would if you were to walk up to it, you know, at a show and actually look at it. And I'm thinking that right around number seven is right where that is. So I'm going to say, OK, go ahead and save. And I'm done. There's my final photo. So I've got a perfectly white background. Um, I have painted out the corners. So I've got nice color. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you the progression there. So here's where we started. We had our photograph and then... We cropped it a little bit, we got rid of those corners, and then we edited the color, and we edited the whiteness there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one more photo just to show you exactly how quickly I can do this if I'm not also trying to teach how I'm doing it at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself arranged here. I always like this picture where they put it on the cap there, but I want to see. No. See, I thought I was clever and I arranged this exactly like I wanted before when I was editing, but no. There we go. That's what I want right there. So that's the photo that I'm going to want to have right there. You can tell it's a fountain pen. I'll take the photo. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot. I'm, I'm just going to kind of do the thing. So I'm going to go ahead and crop. And for what it's worth, if I were actually doing this on my phone in portrait mode, no, I can't. Why is it not giving me the... If I were actually doing this on my phone in portrait mode, I would be able to... Oh, I can. Switch over here to the paint tool. And go ahead and paint out those corners. This is a big one. Ah, see, there we go. There's the bug I encountered earlier with my video recording software where it won't do it. So I've got to go into portrait mode super fast. And I'm so sorry that this video is now probably sideways and we'll go back go ahead and save so I've got that done and then we'll jump into photo editor pro now I'll just quick go advanced color take over my medicine dropper we'll find that nasty green we'll pull that out completely we're gonna do that one more time with a little bit of yellow here see how that affects the ironwood doesn't really seem to this time. We seem to be fairly safe, so I'm going to pull most of that out. Okay, great. Go to tone. Go to contrast. We decided that five was where we were going to put that, so that's where we're going to put it this time. We're going to go to saturation, and I put that at eight last time, so that's where I'm going to put it this time. Check mark done. So less than a minute, and we went from our initial photo that we took to there we go. White background. Is there still a little bit of not perfect white? Yeah, I could jack the contrast a little bit. I could open this in Photoshop and I could fix a little bit of the, you know, remaining issues here. But for the most part, you know, this looks better than 90% of what I see out there. And I did it on my phone. And now hopefully you can too.